Kirk, what would you do if you suddenly found out you won a million dollars? Well, I would uh, do this intro that is part of the uh, Exploring Worlds episode. So, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Here we go with another episode of Exploring Worlds. Now, as you can see, I chose the nice ocean in the background. Peter chose burnt, washed out wood. <laughs> but um, whatever, it's all conceptual, right? Um, so, this episode is going to be based on around, you know, seven, eight months ago or something like that, we, we did an Exploring Worlds episode called The Art of Peter R. Nichols, where we basically explored some of the pieces that he has up on display at the One Flower, One Leaf Art Gallery. And we're basically doing a part two update on that, as there's some incredible new pieces that he's brought to the table that are now up on display. And I'm sure, like any artist, he's came to some new conclusions and some new sort of uh, broken through some new emotional grounds that I think he would really like to, to dive into for this episode. So in just one second here, we're going to turn the camera over to him and see what he has to say. And at the end of this episode, you can enjoy a slideshow of some of the new pieces up at the One Flower, One, Fleaf, one, Flower, one Leaf Art Gallery. Thank you very much. Hey, you're recording, man. As you can see, Peter's photographing me filming. How often is that done? <laughs> okay, we're just getting rid of all of the craziness. Um, you know, I've uh, been an artist my entire life. And um, I've always wanted to bring intelligence to art. Um, I've always wanted to walk with artist in every possible way that I can. That's just my spirit. It's who I am. Uh, I love collaborations. I love, you know, many, many forms of art. But I have recently discovered something that I think can help so many artists that I have preempted my other interview today to talk about this idea that I've come upon that has actually allowed me uh, a level of productivity, a level of creative freedom, uh, a level of clarity within working, you know, with all the different types of arts that I'm doing. It's all premised on rest. You know, a lot of people don't realize how challenging being an artist is, how hard artists work. And we're, in a sense, always trying to seize every moment of every day to, to get our work done. This has led to unbelievable exhaustion and uh, incredible unproductivity. I think in my life, I, you know, I was very strong and I never really ran out of energy. I got older and that changed. But at the same time, I realized that if I wanted my art to continue to excel, I, I needed to find certain things that would be helpful. And of course, we can talk about a lot of different components, and I'm not saying this is exclusively, you know, the thing. I'm just saying that I went off into the last 10 days with a mindset of being at a perfect state of rest at all time. I literally didn't think about the next project I was gonna do. I didn't have any concerns. I lost this sort of thing that was driving, which in a sense gets in the way. And, um, and I started to discover while I was in this place of rest that all of a sudden when something sort of appeared or even an idea, I just moved with it. But I was coming at it from just a place of rest because there was no buildup of expectations or any of these types of things. If you're struggling, you know, with doing your art, if you're really having challenges, you're not feeling inspired, um, I would just suggest rest. Like I said, I realize this message is not for maybe a lot of the younger people. This might not resonate. But if it does, and you can actually walk into your art with a restful, peaceful spirit, I believe that your art will 
just get onto an exponential flow um, and that you will really, really find the voice in your art in a way that you never possibly, you could never imagine. So I thank Kurt for this opportunity to just reach out to, to all the artists. I know she, uh, Kirk and I share uh, a real commitment to walking with uh, other artists and to support them and encourage them in, in so many ways. Um, and so that's something that, you know, I'm just sharing from the heart today. I thank everybody. Thank Kirk. That's all I got to say about it all now. So Peter, I think it was seven or eight months, month, months ago, something like that. Um, we did an Exploring Worlds episode called The Art of Peter R. Nichols. And, um, you know, you've, you've had a lot more work done since then and, and have a lot more pieces up on display. What are some different conclusions and different um, things that, come to your, that have came to your mind since then that have set you on the trajectory you're on now? It has been such a period of growth. Um... I feel that I have been able to study into composition, color spectrums, um, you know, black and whites, negative space. Um, I feel that the art that is being done now, I feel that I'm actually able to communicate a voice to it even much more so. Um, whether it leaves an impression, uh, whether it's, um, you know, uh, a specific study. I feel that it's, my life has become so balanced and as I spoke earlier into an earlier video about rest and the joy that, that has brought spontaneity back to art. Um, I, I feel that I'm I'm different and um, I feel like I can conceptualize in a much more effective manner. Not to say I don't have much room for growth. I'm always reminded of Rembrandt who said that just before his death that he almost got hit the head right. Um, we're always learning. I think the, um, the important component of it all is, is balance. And, um, and so I feel that I'm much more able to convey that through the pieces that I've uh, you know, put out recently. So Peter, I hear that your university description of conceptual art in the Stanford Philosophy Encyclopedia, if I'm getting that correct, that right. um, has been updated since you were studying it and since you were in school, and you seemed quite fascinated about that. Um, so just explain into that what, what's changed about it and why, and what, where, where do you stand with that change? Well, I certainly want to premise you know, this discussion on the fact that conceptual art is, is very, very difficult to define by anybody, including all the artists who are participating in it. Um, and the central idea of conceptual art it hasn't changed in a matter of speaking. It's, you know, clearly, it's still about the idea, you know, that is uh, foremost, you know, in the mind of the artist that he wants to conceptualize out uh, in a way to help us uh, broaden our expanse uh, of what art is. Um, there are conceptual artists that are non-materialist, there are some that are materialist. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of range for people to be really included in this with, you know, really interesting ideas uh, to not only help expand our uh, understanding of art, but uh, the world, you know, at large. Um, I think that there seems to be um, a real divide. Uh, there, there are people who are convinced that every single conceptual artist is against traditional art, we'll say. 
And that's just not the case. I'm a huge fan of art myself as a conceptual artist. I don't need to disrespect another type of art in order to elevate mine or anything like that. I think all expressions of the spirit are essentially what uh, art really does represent. And perhaps we don't always enjoy that, we don't always enjoy that message. Um, and sometimes we find it utterly fascinating and ineffable. And so, you know, art is a lot more than, you know, just decorations for the wealthy, as they say. Um, there are so many different types of art that so many different people respond to and, um, and want to actually act on that um, really just gives them this, this opportunity to, to have that expression. And so I, I've been sort of seeing conceptual art for, for quite a long time as a, really quite a divisive thing where it's really trying to just, in a sense, shock you or do something like that. Um, and that's not what all conceptual art is out to try to do. For sure, it's there to try to impart an idea, impart a message. Um, and, um, and for that, I think, you know, I'm very happy to sort of, you know, weigh in, you know, with this group, you know, and be a, a member of that. Having said that, a lot of my art has always been motivated by, I want to see something I've never seen before. Um, so much of the art that has been done, again, very wonderful and very excellent and uh, things like that. But, you know, I've been in my life, that's just sort of been my, my, my main motivator. And so the art that I'm doing is, um, is very inclusive in nature. I like to use every single tool that I have at my disposal. Whether you're painting something, or sketching something, or filming something, or video, uh, different ways of using videos, uh, you know, digital, uh, all that, I mean, it's, it, we live in a vast world of, of opportunities and, and of expressions. The computer has brought us amazing art, um, and um, I just think that it's important to use every tool at your disposal. I've said this so many times, people are probably just tired of me saying it, but um, I would encourage everybody to do that. And, and if you're doing something, you know, you just keep doing it. You just keep following your joy. And by doing so, you're going to uncover the things that are going to really help that, uh, that art form and that expression. And so I think that um, Conceptual art needs to be understood in a sense of bringing intelligence into the art world. It needs to be understood as bringing, you know, very thoughtful premises um, and most certainly wonderful, very interesting art um, that um, the world is really responding to and relating to very, very well. Excellent, Peter. Sounds very thoughtful. So what do you say we head up to the gallery and uh, put together a slideshow of some of that new art that you've been talking about? That's a great idea. Why don't we head up there and check out some of that art? <laughs> nice.